Hi, good morning. Um, I'm just amazed by what's possible with Copilot. So today I'm going to share with you like what is actually possible using Copilot. So setup is very straightforward. I have a Mac and on the Mac I've installed Visual Studio Code and I've just installed the extension um, of Copilot. So first thing we are going to do, let's see, you know, I'm a deep learning guy, so let's do some deep learning. So I'm start with an empty source code here and I'll just put in solving MNIST using tensor flow keras um, and cnn okay that's, that's a good idea so you have to do look closely every time i type and there's something in gray this is actually the suggestion by copilot and let's get started first thing i'd like to do is um, import all the modules TensorFlow is a good one. Keras, why not? Layers, why not? NumPy might be necessary. Matplotlib, always nice to render something. Okay, then try. Or data set. Mm -hmm. Aha, aha. So it already does something. So I have train images, train labels, test images, test labels, TF Keras, loading something. Okay. Normalize. Data. Uh huh. So that is something quite. Uh huh. So it is something that I remember. So in MNIST, when you get when you load those pictures, they all have pixel values in between zero and two hundred fifty-five, including. So I'm just normalizing this. Do a one-hot encoding of the labels. Mm -hmm. See what's happening here. Oh, TF curves, okay. And also doing the same for tests. So this is rather beautiful. So normalize the data. Do one hot encoding of the labels. And then let's create a CNN using the sequential API. So sequential API, very straightforward. Okay, tries to create something. Here comes the convolution input shape. Max pooling, convolution, max pooling, flatten, dense, layer stance, and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, but if I look, if I if I check it, it has now a different input shape. I seem to remember that the original, yeah, you have to reshape the training data and the test data. Okay. So train images getting reshaped. So this is actually an error that I saw without running it because it says down here the input shape is 28281 and I know from quite a lot of experiences that the input shape of this data set is 2828. Okay, so this is the model. Mm -hmm. Compile the model. Atom optimizer, categorical cross entropy is lost. Let me just do some formatting. So this is something that well, the copilot doesn't do that well, but I have the strongest sense for aesthetics to so put it in. So an atom optimizer for the training part itself, so question grain descent, categorical cross entropy of the lost metrics and accuracy. Well, then I would say um, train the model and keep the history. Use a validation split of, look at this, 20%, okay just suggesting and keep in mind this those are suggestions that just come from the from copilot so it's not something nothing that i've prepared in advance it looks like and I'm, I'm just triggering some scripts here but it's not true it's just copilot doing some things so model fit the train images and the train labels that should work epochs is one and validation split is 0 0.5 uh, 0 0.2 sorry train the model and then well why not Render the history use loss and accuracy in separate separate plots. Okay, very nice. So first plotting history of a loss. Okay, that's nice. Now comes the accuracy. Mm -hmm. Epoch label loss accuracy legend show. Render the history use loss and accuracy. So this is something that actually shouldn't work. Well, it would, but it's not that it's not a good style because it's plotting the loss 
and the accuracy in the same one. Use loss and accuracy. Let's just go to loss and validation loss. Let's see what's happening now. So I can now remove that one. History. Oh, it's the val loss. Legend show. And now render accuracy and validation accuracy. Mm -hmm. Accuracy, there you go. Validation accuracy, legend show. And now just finishing evaluate the model, use the test data. Test loss, print test accuracy. Hmm, looks very interesting. So I'm saving this and just let's give it a try. Python mnist.py. Let's see what's happening now. So I did not, well, okay, it goes straight to training. So except for this tiny little thing that I fixed in, in the beginning, uh -huh, looks at least interesting. So it's now training on my Mac. And what I see here is the loss. Okay, it's going down. Accuracy is going up. And look at this, we have a validation accuracy of 98%. Mm, this is quite interesting. Let's see in a moment what's going on here. Validation split 0 0.2. Now this, so this might happen. It looks, doesn't look that, that, that complicated. So and what you see here is that after just a few minutes, I have now almost um, yeah, more than 60 lines of code here and the thing is up and running. And I find this quite amazing. So if you really, really look closely and you're invited to just go through this video again and again. So every time um, there is a code suggestion from Copilot, usually it, it makes quite some sense. So um, I just navigate it through the whole thing by like talking to the AI. And this is what I like the most is the dialogue. So the dialogue is when well, I put in some stuff that I'd like to have. I mean, I said that we are going to train MNIST and then now go import all the modules and load data set, normalize the data, reshape the data. And those are things that I said, like in English. And then what Copilot did is just auto completing, suggesting source code. And I mean, except for a couple of tiny little details, it worked. And well, there you go. There's the validation loss and the loss going down. Mm -hmm. Very promising. So this is quite fantastic. Oh, similar thing for the accuracy. Okay, that's also quite fantastic. And then we take another look. Here, there you go. Test accuracy is 98%, accuracy is 98%. So this is quite amazing. I mean, it's just, <laughs> just MNIST right out of the box.